How's it going guys? This is Ideas of Ice and Fire and this is my review for Game of Thrones Season 7 Episode 6. Now I'm going to start by talking about all the things that I liked in the episode. And after I'm done talking about some of the things that I liked, I'm going to get into the reasons why I think this is one of the worst episodes in Game of Thrones history. The stuff that is generally good in Game of Thrones was good in this episode. It looked really good. It had pretty decent choreography. The White Walkers themselves looked really good. A lot of great costumes and makeup jobs. The bear scene was definitely fun to watch. We do get a white bear in the books as well, so it was pretty cool to see it here. I liked seeing this group of men that have never really interacted together before interact. I thought Jon Snow trying to give Longclaw to Jorah and Jorah giving it back and saying that it belongs to him was a nice touch. And I'd pretty much be reaching if I said I really enjoyed anything else in this episode. This episode made no sense. So they're on a frozen island in the middle of a lake. And the reason that the others can't cross is because there's water and they're falling in the water. So they have to wait for Gendry to run back to Eastwatch. So that he can tell the people at Eastwatch to send a raven to Daenerys Targaryen. So that Daenerys Targaryen can get her dragon and fly up past Eastwatch, past the wall, and save them all. And all this time, that water didn't freeze until the very last minute. A raven can fly at absolute maximum 60 miles per hour. It would have taken days for a raven to reach Dragonstone. And let's just be generous and say that it takes Daenerys on her dragons a day to fly past Eastwatch. You mean to tell me that they were waiting on that island for days in the freezing cold below freezing when the others are around in the books you can barely breathe because it's so cold and that water didn't freeze the white walkers didn't bother to test whether or not the water had been frozen completely until the hound threw a rock at it and then when they finally do start to attack why are they moving so slowly and why are they so weak? They established in Hardhome that the White Walkers are almost like this unstoppable force. They get slaughtered so easily at Hardhome. And you have six, seven men here just taking them out with like single swings of their swords and their hammers. And then Tormund gets thrown on the ground at one point and they're all covering him and it's taking forever. There's like no blood being drawn. I'm like, how is he fighting all of these guys off? And then even later you see someone get thrown into a bunch of White Walkers in a similar fashion and he's immediately torn apart. Why wasn't Tormund ripped apart? There's no way. There's like four of them on him at one point and he's basically on the ground and then it cuts back and he's on his feet and there's less of them on him and then it cuts back again and there's barely even any on him and it was just so ridiculous. He should have been dead. I don't buy that they held off those whites. It goes against everything that we've established about the whites so far. They're way too easy to kill here. And I thought it was ridiculous in that earlier scene where they kill the one White Walker and all of the other Whites die except for one. That's so convenient. And why does that other White just not keep attacking after the others die? It's almost acting as if it has some sense of self-preservation, which we know they do not. They keep attacking no matter what. That's how it's been from the very beginning. And to be honest, I really don't like- Hey! What the- what the heck was that? Oh, well, to be honest, I really don't like- Hey! Okay, what is that? I'm trying to make my review. It's me, Game of Thrones fanboy 26. You know, I used to like this channel, but all you do now is hate on the show. Well, I mean, that's not totally fair. I mean, if there are things that are objectively bad, I mean, I do point them out. Now, don't you understand that this is a fantasy show? Fantasy doesn't have to make sense. It's got dragons and white walkers. What? Just because it's got dragons and white walkers doesn't mean that it doesn't have to make sense. Do you have any idea how much time George R. R. Martin put into building this world? Oh, here you go again, sounding all superior because you've read the books. Well, f you, I'm unsubscribing. Okay, I mean, I have no idea who you are, but okay, I guess? Well, back to my review. I honestly don't think that this was very well thought out. Here, so many characters have plot armor. There are so many convenient things that just happen. I don't understand why Benjen had to die. It seems to me that he could have just jumped on the horse instead of running back to fight. And I also don't get why when Daenerys comes in to save them all and lands, that the Night King chooses to aim his spear at Viserion instead of Drogon who's right there with Daenerys on him. 
by killing Drogon, that means at least one other dragon would have had to land to come for Daenerys, then he could have more easily killed that dragon, and when that dragon was gone, the other one may have landed and he could have killed that dragon and had three dragons. But instead, he kills Viserion and then takes his sweet time trying to kill Drogon. It's almost like he was letting her escape. And then Jon Snow, rather than getting on the dragon with everyone else, he keeps pushing himself backwards to go fight the others, but there's a dragon right there. That dragon could literally just turn its head and roast those whites. But no, that would make too much sense, wouldn't it? We've got to give Jon Snow that heroic moment and make him survive miraculously. Since that's salt water, that water could have very well been below freezing. His entire body should have gone numb. He was soaking wet. He should have frozen to death. Now you could argue that since Jon is technically dead, that he can't die again, or that he has some immunity to the cold, but Beric Dondarrion totally dies in normal ways, all the time. He doesn't seem to have any resistance whatsoever to what would normally kill a human being. So why suddenly attribute powers to Jon Snow that have not been established? We know that Daenerys is fireproof in the show. That's been established since very early on. You don't get to insert things because they're convenient. There is a white bear attack early on, and then after they kill it, later on they sneak up on the others, but how did they sneak up on the others when the others have already attacked with that white bear? If the others attacked with that white bear, that means the others knew that Jon Snow and the gang were there, so how were they surprised later on by the fire? Look at Hardhome, look at the attack on Bloodraven's cave. The whites act as one mind. So this whole bear thing was cool, but it didn't make any sense logically. And I thought it was a little silly at the end when Jon Snow bends the knee to Daenerys after she already says that they're going to defeat the Night King together. So it seems to me that right there she's saying, you don't have to bend the knee, I know about the White Walkers, we're going to stop them. But he chooses to bend the knee anyways, even though it's going to piss off the Northern Lords because, well, there's no reason that he does it, he just does it. Just one of many character decisions that makes no sense. So let's move on to the Lord of Cringe herself, Arya Stark. Now Arya definitely has my vote for worst character in the show at this point. So pretty much everything that I've been saying about Arya so far this season applies here. She's become a lunatic Hannibal Lecter, wants to antagonize Sansa for no reason whatsoever. There's not much to say about it. She threatens Sansa in this episode. She's basically like, I'm gonna take your face, Sansa. I'm gonna take your face, and I'm going to wear it, Sansa. Also, the faces in the bag look ridiculous. They look like rubber mask from Party City. If this all ties itself up in episode 7 and Arya is playing Littlefinger, it doesn't really change the fact that Arya is super cringe now. For all the reasons that I pointed out in my Arya sucks video. Tyrion was totally forgettable in this episode. Tyrion has been forgettable this entire season. Tyrion has been forgettable for the last couple of seasons. He has a few scenes with Daenerys and she doesn't listen to him. Sansa gets a letter from Cersei to go down to King's Landing and the dialogue between her and Brienne is goofy. It's weird because at first Brienne is like, you're the Lady of Winterfell, they want you. And then Sansa very reasonably says, I'm the Lady of Winterfell, I'm gonna remain here, I'm not going back to King's Landing so Cersei can kill me. And then Brienne's argument changes and she says, I don't want to leave you here with Littlefinger. So it would be safer for her to go to King's Landing than to be in Winterfell with Littlefinger surrounded by loyal men? Ha ha! Ha ha! George R. Martin is rolling his eyes right now. Alright, so if you want to turn your brain off and act like this is quality stuff, be my guest. Oh my god, you're so arrogant! What? Game of Thrones Fanboy 26, I thought you unsubscribed. I did. I'm just checking back in to see if your channel is still crap. And it is. Bye. Um... Uh, okay, whatever. To sum things up, guys, this is what I always thought would happen with Game of Thrones. When that first season aired and it was so good, I thought, you know, this is gonna devolve into crap. That was the thought in the back of my mind. I thought that once this show starts to get popular, and once it starts to hit the mainstream, they were going to stop caring about those finer details. And I was right, that's exactly what happened. First season of Game of Thrones, they weren't cutting you any breaks. You had to pay attention. Things happened for a reason. Now you have all these watchers that don't care about it making sense. Oh, this is a fantasy show. Oh, it doesn't have to make sense. People that have probably never picked up a book in their life have no respect for this genre that I love, are just watching television for entertainment. You read a series like A Song of Ice and Fire and it's more than entertainment. It's enlightenment. You learn so much about people and politics and philosophy. All of that is lost in the show. All of that is gone. It's just shenanigans now. Shenanigans. And I used to always be able to say, well, it's not on par with the books, but it's still good for what it is. Now it's not even good for what it is. It's just a polished turd. It looks good, but it has no substance. And 
That's an absolute shame, and it's ridiculous that people are calling this the best show in the world. This episode gets a 2 out of 10 just because it looked good. Worst rating I've ever given an episode of Game of Thrones, by far, and it pains me to do it, but I have to. I've been following the development of the show for over 8 years. I've been reading these books for over a decade at this point. I have tons of merchandise from HBO. I have every season on Blu-ray. I told my friends for years, watch this show, watch this amazing show, Game of Thrones, you won't be disappointed by it. And now I feel so ashamed that it has devolved into this level of a horrid. And I am a nerd at my core, and yes, I'm very passionate about these things, and people with no passion, maybe you can't understand this. But I know there are other people that do. I know there are other people that share my pain. So if you share my pain, like this video, and subscribe for more ideas of ice and fire. Thank you guys for watching. Where the f*** did they get those chains and how the f*** did they get it around the dragon's head?